His music celebrates a dramatic and positive change in his life, a far cry from the lonely, depressing, drug-filled days and years he spent homeless on the streets. That I was sleeping in snowbanks. My friends told me they were all deserting me because they were sick and tired of watching me die. Jeff's journey to hell and back is similar to many on the street. Swept up in the cycle of drug addiction, he lost his job, income, home, and family. Today he is sober. His family is back with him. He has a roof over his head at a street-to-home supportive housing facility and a new beginning in his life. Oh, it's night and day. I get, I've got a walk-in shower. <laughs> I have my own bathroom, and I, and I manage to keep it clean. And uh, it, the little things that everyone takes for granted are so special. Because when you're homeless, you don't have none of that. Taylor Manor is like a mansion. I mean, I have my own space. I have my kitchenette. I have a bathroom and my own shower. Beverly was also rescued from homelessness and is now living in her new home at Taylor Manor, one of many street-to-home co-funded supportive housing projects. A grandmother, she is bipolar but didn't know it. Her mental disorder combined with alcohol sent her into severe depression and she ended up alone on the street. Now she has reconnected with her family and grandkids and has a second chance in life. Has getting a home given your life back? Yes, it has. Yes. Street to Home was born a decade ago when homelessness was rising to record numbers on the downtown east side. This huge social problem caught the attention of private sector entrepreneurs, one in particular, who believed they had to find a collaborative way to make things better. What I've always believed that in order to address any major social issue, you really need to have an effort that is bringing together groups of people that all bring different, different things to the table. Frank Justra pledged $5 million of his personal wealth to kickstart Street to Home and encouraged other private sector business heads to contribute. With guidance from the Vancouver Foundation, they raised over $31 million. John McLaren has been Street to Home's board chair from the beginning. We sort of call ourselves a, a leverage organization because uh, the deal we had with the province was, I think it was 10 to one. We, we put up a buck, they put up 10 bucks. and. Uh, the uh, city gave us the land for long-term lease, but we were the drivers to get these projects done. And get it done they did with a united effort creating supportive living spaces for those who didn't have homes. So far, 21 co-funded buildings, 1,335 homes have been built, providing housing for over 1,800 homeless men and women. Combined with its rent bank, which provides interest-free loans to vulnerable renters, Street to Home has helped 2,600 people escape homelessness. There was a lot of homeless on the streets. Uh, there was a lot of service providers trying to address the issue, but there didn't appear to be, they didn't appear to be making headway. It was really an opportunity for the private sector to step up. I think the beginning really was about trying to bring a private sector lens to a very complex social problem. They developed a 10-year plan, collaborating with the province, BC Housing, Vancouver Coastal Health, and the city of Vancouver, Street to Home tailored its supportive housing for women at risk, women with children, youth, single adults, couples, seniors, and people with HIV. We adopted this whole housing first um, approach um, you know, first things first, just get a roof over everyone's head, uh, make sure the doors lock and try to get them three square meals and try to get them the support that they need uh, to get better. They come from all walks of life. Addiction doesn't have any boundaries. The homeless numbers illustrate the depth of the problem. Over half of the homeless population have addiction problems. Over 80% have mental health or medical issues. And a third of them have physical disabilities. In so many cases, it was prescription drugs, pills to ease pain after an accident or injury at work that has contributed to their addictions. Cody is one of them. When his prescriptions to ease the pain from a punishing back injury expired, 
he and his wife Nadine found themselves on the street looking for heroin to ease his constant pain. Now they are both addicts. 11 years of uh, having a prescription and not, you know, not messing it up, they just took it away from me. And so I was basically left, you know, in withdrawal and in pain. And so I turned to street drugs rather quickly to just to take care of the pain. Self-medicating. Yeah. It could happen to anybody, couldn't it? Oh yeah, it happens every day. It is estimated almost 30% of Metro Vancouver's homeless have come here in the last year. Cody and Nadine moved to the downtown east side from Powell River, hoping to get access to drugs, food, services, and housing. Our finances went, went when we lost our kids, and then our housing, and then our belongings. 40% of the people in the downtown east side are new to the downtown east side the last two years. Despite the reality of ever-increasing homelessness, Street to Home is making a difference throughout Vancouver and in Canada's poorest neighborhood, the downtown east side. We have learned so much about homelessness. We continue to explore new ideas, evidence-based practices. Uh, we beg, borrow, and steal from abroad whenever we can, bring it to Vancouver, adapt it, and, and look for outcomes that the private sector can get behind. And what's the life like when you don't have a place to sleep and you're, you have an addiction? It's hopeless. Leanne knows the difference between homelessness and recovery. A recovering alcoholic, she spent a year on the street fleeing an abusive relationship. Now sober with a street to home roof over her head, her life has taken a positive turn. To look back, I'm working now and I'm, you know, I have a roof over my head and I won't do anything to, to screw that up. <laughs> How much has that roof over your head meant? Oh, everything. Absolutely everything. It has also been a meaningful life change for Will. His progression from a homeless drug addict to street to home supportive housing has also been life changing. On the street was day to day where like where am I going to get the next meal or where am I going to get money for drugs and uh, in life now is much better because they provide meals here and uh, it's stable housing. Have you been able to get off the drugs? Yeah. So you're sober? Yeah. How does that feel? Much better, way healthier. Well I think they've done a remarkable job in, in promoting their goals of uh, finding safe affordable housing for uh, people that are homeless in this city but they've come to realize I think that uh, housing is not the only thing that is needed if someone is suffering from addictions issues and that um, despite having social supports and access to health care when one is in new housing um, that's that's only the very basics that's needed for someone to start on their journey to recovery. We hope that five ten years down the road there's fewer people on the street and there's um, a place where people with problems can turn to and get the help that they want and, um, and they can be, um, um, they can integrate back into society and contribute and feel good about who they are and what they do. I think the legacy um, really is a group of people came together to try and understand a difficult issue in the city. And through their thinking and uh, collaboration, came up with ideas that significantly improved the, uh, the lives of many people. The Street to Home journey is a huge success story in transition, but the achievements to date creating quality supportive housing is just the beginning. Moving forward, addiction treatment and job training will be the new focus. Together with supportive housing, they are the determining factors that will truly change the lives of homeless people in a positive, productive way.